Welcome aboard for another video. Thanks, Conductor Keith. The purpose of today's video is to show you my new Kata or Kata Tiger Tank with radio control. During the build, I took note of a couple things that might be useful to you, so watch this video before you build. So there's some tips in there. And then I'm going to talk about my thoughts on the tank, give it a basic review. Just so you know, and for the purposes of disclosure, my friend Craig at Brick Army Canada wanted me to do a review of this tank so he can put it on his website because he sells these. Now the thing is, Craig knows that I'm going to give an honest review. So for him, it's a bit of a risk. However, as the video will show, there are some pros and cons, mostly pros. I really do like it. So Craig has nothing to worry about. This is my third radio control CADA or CADA tank that I've built. The other two tanks are a T-34 and a Panther. There are videos in the playlist that you will find on the end screen of this video. In that playlist, there are my thoughts on those two tanks as well. And what is this? Have fun building Terry. Am I building Terry? No. <laughs> okay, and what if we hear? Kada or Kada, not sure how they pronounce it, Master. 135, reasonably heavy, 925 pieces for 14 plus, so I presume I can manage it. As with my other tanks, the presentation box is quite nice. Here is the back of the box. Let's have a look inside this thing. As with the other two tanks, the inside is two more boxes that look quite nice. And of course, here are the important bits sort of heavy, thick manual. I have to be clear, this is not going to be a build video. I may film bits and bobs here and there to show the progress, but there are other build videos online. This is really just going to be my thoughts. If during the build I run into problems or I run into things I particularly like, I will highlight them in this video. I haven't even begun and already dreaded stickers. If at all possible, I won't use them. I'm going to start with the packages labeled one. And just like with the other Kata or Kata tanks, the pieces feel good. They feel, there's some quality in the pieces there. One thing I did with my previous two tanks is when I'm putting all the gear pieces on, I don't cinch them on so tight that they, there's a lot of uh, rubbing, if that makes any sense. Um, you know, make, make things nice and loose so that you're not gonna make the motors work extra hard. There were supposed to be these stickers on each of these, but I chose not to put them on. Uh, my other two tanks, sometimes the little middle wheel pieces don't, don't move. And um, I'd rather not that be more obvious by more detail, if that makes any sense. I figure I'm going to want to run the thing as soon as it's done. So without further delay, I'm going to go and I'm going to plug this in and make sure the battery is fully charged for when it is ready to run. There you go. It's charging here on the workshop floor. The whole business has attracted some help. Are you having fun, bud? Yeah. Okay, while my little buddy is holding the phone there, uh, I, this is just a test. It's just time to test things. I know we're not that far along in the instructions yet, but I like to know that things work before I go any further. What do you think, bud? We give it a thumbs up and carry on? Yeah, but also, um, we just plugged it in, so yeah. that's how it works. Yeah. As with the T-34 and the Panther tank, all the wires that are in here, you can see them down in there, the wires are, well, they're hard to tuck. I had to, these pieces actually were already on, but to fit this down in here, I mean, I follow the directions on how to fold the wires. It's just uh, shagging around. You have to take these pieces off, or at least I did, and move things around so that the pins that go through would fit because the wire's in the way. And yeah, the wires are too long. I understand they have standard parts, but if the wires were a little shorter, it'd be nice. Anyway, this one though was easier to tuck the wires in than the other two tanks. So that's a plus. Also, while getting to all these steps over here, the, the inner frames only held on to the outer frame by one stud under here and one stud under there. So it kept popping out, which is irritating, but minor of course. So I just took these two parts temporarily to put them there and help stabilize it a little so I can keep working here. And of course, I'm going to test before I carry on further building it in that this is there's nothing, there's no wires or something that are hooking up on this. I strongly recommend that you do that so you don't find that there's a piece of wire or something in there that's fouling something. So now I'm at the part where I'm putting tracks on. 
And if you look at the pictures here, they're okay. But remember to make sure the spacing is such that the track fits up in there like that. See when you go in reverse, the slack that's in the track there is exactly like the real tiger tank. Yeah, perfect. Tracks are on, seems to run well. So right here, it's asking me to put stickers, which, which would be on the top of this piece right there and there. And these are the stickers. Now I think I will use those stickers. I'm not gonna use the wheel stickers. And now that I have it together, I'm glad I'm not, and I'll show you why. It turns out that this is geared to that. So this actually goes in the backwards to the rest of these. Just watch carefully. You see that? Pay attention to this one. Because this has, you know, dark and lighter spots, the bolts and whatnot. You're gonna add more detail on here that's gonna show that some of these aren't moving and this one's going backwards. So I'd rather just camouflage that a little bit. Not to, you know, <laughs> talking about tanks and camouflage. When you get to this part to put the back on, it'll clip in the bottom easily enough and it won't seem to clip into there. Tuck your fingers down. I tuck my fingers in here or in here, not, not on these. And I really pushed here. And you know what? A couple times I didn't think it was gonna go, but it did, it clipped in and the back is on really solid. So in that part, I put that sticker on here before I put it on there, only to realize it wasn't aligned because this aligns onto there. Then in peeling it off, I ruined it. I did use these kill stickers. Make sure that when it's on the tank that that's the lines there, you know, where they come back together facing down. When this tank was first out several years ago, I watched a review and the gun would keep wiggling and it was really loose and it would just wiggle wiggle and all the parts would wiggle wiggle and uh you know that looked really disappointing but they seem to have redesigned it because it's nice and solid the tank sits done with the very clever on off button which is right there click the on off here and... nice Ooh. now here's a weird little design oddity where that hammer is. This rear part, bump. You see it bump it? You see that bump? It's irritating. There were no missing parts in the kit, and there were some spares as you can see. So I took this temporarily, I took this spear, put it there, and it might not be prototypical. I put the hammer back there. Now, nothing hits anything, except the thing over there. It's nice and smooth. The turret's in a bit loose. That might be why this was bumping here. But really, when I'm operating it, you don't know that. Here's your... Here. It's on, off, on, off. But it is a brick model. It is 2.4 gigahertz RC. But you know, for what it is, pretty cool. Now I find these stickers a little out of place. Well, maybe not those, but these ones look a little out of place to me. I'll leave these stickers on and I'll leave these stickers on, but the mismatch of color here bothered me and I, I actually like it better without them there. In terms of realism, you have to understand it's a brick model, so it's not gonna be as realistic as your you know model kit. I think it looks fairly good. It's certainly heavy. I really wish they'd used gray pieces in there so they wouldn't be so noticeable. Now, normally you're looking at the tank like this. The Panther tank build uh, was frustrating in some ways. There were parts of it that I found frustrating uh, to put together. Not only that, if you breathe on this or bump the rear end of the tank the wrong way, it'll come off. And then you have to fiddle around to get it back on. Uh, oops, I just knocked this off. That's my fault. Do I like this tank? Yes, I do. Now the T-34, good tank. The biggest frustration though is how the back was designed. With the gearing here, after a little while, it would work some of the parts that were holding it all together loose and it would fall apart. I redesigned the rear end of the tank. And since I've done that, the working parts haven't worked themselves loose. Also, I added a stud in here and a stud in here to keep these parts on, because before I did that, you breathe on these, it would just fall off. However, having said all that, this tank runs really well. It's slower than this tank, but it's a very good solid runner. And again, I really like it. This one, when it runs, vibrates a bit. So everything goes, it vibrates a little bit when running. So all in all, this was the first one I built. This was the second one I built. Again, there I have videos about these tanks in my playlist. This one is a more solid build 
the rear end of the tank, the front, all the parts, there's not a whole lot that's going to easily pop off to be a fiddly bit to put back on again. I had zero frustrations building at no point did I stop in the middle of building this tank with any frustrations. So I'm going to say that this tank of the three radio controlled tanks in this general scale, I would have to say this one is the one that is built the most solidly. The parts are built solid on there and it also runs, I think, slightly the best and a little bit faster. So this one's a real winner for me. This one, you know, it brings a huge smile to my face. Absolutely love it. Well, it's time for the tank to go where it's going to be residing. Now, Marge, I hear they're bringing a tiger tank here over to the military area where they're going to evaluate it. Oh, I know, Henry, I know. It's very exciting. Well, yes, of course, Marge, yes, of course, yes, because we all know that you love tanks a lot. Oh, yes, I do, especially when they arrive by train. <sighs> I've been thinking of putting a rubberized surface or some other kind of surface to prevent, you know, the sliding. So until I can figure out a better spot, I'm going to have to park it down at the end here. It'll stay there for now. Oh, look, Marge, you get to look at the tank's rear end. Very funny, Henry, very funny. If you want to have one of these beauties, I'll leave links to Craig's business here in Canada in the description to this video. You don't have to be in Canada to order one of these from him. However, he is the only Canadian distributor of CADA or CADA. And of course, he also sells Kobe.